Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to go over another tool for analyzing projects and that is the internal rate of return or sometimes it's referred to in its short form as IRR. And the internal rate of return is very closely tied to the net present value. And what the internal rate of return is, is basically the rate of return that makes the net present value equal to zero. So let's say that we have this project with the cash flows drawn in this timeline. So the project is costing us $100 today and it's going to generate cash flows of $60 in year one and year two. So if we were to find the net present value of this project, what do we do? We have to take all the cash flows, discount them to time zero, and then net all of them out. So the negative 100, it's already in time zero. Now the $60 in the first year, we have to discount by one year to time zero. Now we don't know what the discount rate is. We're not given it. So let's just keep the discount rate as an R for now. So we're going to have 60 over 1 plus R to the power of 1 because we're discounting that $60 for back uh, one year to time zero. Now this $60 in year two, we're going to have to discount by two years back to time zero. So we would take this 60 and divide it by 1 plus R squared. So this here represents the general formula for the NPV of this project depending what our required rate of return is. That would be the R value there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of different discount rates and then see what the project's NPV is going to be. So I'm going to start with this 0%. Now if the rate is 0%, notice how the denominators in all cases will always be 1. So the NPV is just going to be the cash flows without any time value because the rate is 0% time value is irrelevant so you could just net out the cash flows as they are to get the NPV so it'd be negative 100 plus 60 plus 60 that would give us a positive NPV value of $20. Now similarly what if the discount rate is 5% well we take the 5% and if we plug it into this formula the 5% will have to be in decimals so we would plug in 0 0.05 for R and then when we do that and we calculate the MPV in our calculator, we would get $11.56. Now you can also find this MPV using your financial calculator. So you would input the cash flow times zero as negative 100. And then in year one and year two, the cash flow in year one and year two, you would input as 60 and 60 respectively. And then you would put in that 5% as your discount rate, compute the MPV, you should get that same answer of $11.56. And similarly, if you follow that process with a couple of more rates, so I use 10%, 15%, 20%, you would get these respective MPVs here, uh, $4.13, $2.46, and negative $8.33. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these rates and their respective MPVs for this project, and I'm going to graph them. So on the y-axis is going to be the MPV, and then on the x-axis is going to be the discount rate, just so we can see visually what the relationship between the rate and the MPV is. So the first point I'm going to plot here is this first coordinate. So at a discount rate of 0%, which is here, the MPV is going to be 20, which is up here. So this point represents this relationship right here. At a discount rate of 0%, the MPV is $20. And if we do that for the rest of the points, we would get these coordinates here. So at a rate of 5%, the MPV is $11.56. At a rate of 10%, the MPV is $4.13. At a rate of 15%, the MPV is negative at negative $2.46. And then at 20%, negative eight dollars and 33 cents so if we connect everything and then draw a line now this looks like a line sort of but it should actually be a bit of a curve so don't mind my drawing but even from this we can tell that as the discount rate is going up the mpv is going down so the discount rate and the mpv have an inverse relationship so as the discount rate goes up the mpv goes down or Vice versa, if the discount rate goes down, so we're going to the left, the MPV goes up. Now, 
This video is about the internal rate of return and we said it's the rate of return that makes MPV equal to zero. So notice MPV is going to be zero on this y-axis here. So we have to find at what rate will we have an MPV of zero. So that would be right there. So we know that our IRR is happening somewhere there. It's somewhere in between 10 and 15 percent that when we plug it in to this equation, that rate between 10 and 15 percent, we would get an MPV of zero. Now, how do we solve for IRR? Unfortunately, we can't do it algebraically because it's impossible to do so. So you have two options. You can do trial and error. So you can start plugging in rates in between 10 and 15 percent until you get an MPV that's close to zero. However, the easier way to do it is to use your financial calculator. So every financial calculator, no matter which one you have, is going to have an IRR function. So all you do for the IRR is you input the cash flows. So the cash flow in time zero would be negative 100. The cash flow in time one would be 60. And then the cash flow in time two would be 60 as well. And then all you have to do is compute that IRR value. And when you do that, you should get a value of 13.07%. And we could be pretty confident that that IRR answer is correct because notice how 13.07% is in between 10 and 15%. So at that rate, 13.07%, this specific project will have an MPV of zero. So if you think about it, now we can compare our required rate of return for the project depending on which one is given. In this case, there was none given, but in other questions they will be given. You can compare that required rate of return to your IRR. If the required rate of return is greater than that IRR of 13.07%, you know you're going to have a negative MPV value. And if it's less than that IRR of 13.07%, you know the MPV is going to be positive. So summing all of those findings up in a general rule. So the first rule, if the required rate of return is less than your IRR, then we know our MPV is going to be greater than zero. We would accept that project. If the required rate of return on the project is equal to the IRR of the project, then we know the MPV is equal to zero and we would be indifferent of whether to accept it or reject it. And then if the required rate is greater than the IRR, we know the MPV is going to be less than zero, we would reject that project. Now, the big advantage of using the internal rate of return is that it's very closely tied to the MPV. And we've always said that the MPV is the golden rule for investment criteria. It's always the best one to use. So the IRR, the internal rate of return, at least to the same decision, as an MPV of whether to accept or reject a project. But the project has to be independent and it has to have conventional cash flows. So if the projects, if you're comparing two projects and they're mutually exclusive, some problems may arise. Also, if the cash flows are unconventional, then other problems may arise as well. So we'll go through those problems in the next video. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.